Hey guys, good to see everybody again. A little bit of housekeeping here before we get into the R9. I want you guys to know that I absolutely love and thrive upon taking your questions and helping you get answers to those. But something I'm experiencing is I'm getting inundated with a lot of questions that I've already put in the work, the very hard work to get answered for you. So if you're new around here, uh, this is not my primary YouTube channel. This is a sister channel to my bigger one, the Argon Exploration or Advancement channel, also known as AEAC Home. Over on that channel, you'll get full reviews at 50 and 100 yards for PCPs, 25 and 50 for Springers. You'll get event coverage like SHOT Show and EWA. You'll get factory tours from all over the world. Um, you'll get the Pyramid Air Cup, the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge, the Extreme Benchrest event coverage. That's all over there. If you want to know what's on deck or the bullpen, so to speak, hit me up on my website, aecaonline.com. I have listed there what is here for review, what's in the immediate queue, and what's been alleged inbound by a manufacturer, distributor, or retailer. So you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, can get that list there. I'm always updating it. Sometimes the supplier does change their mind because guns tend to sit around here a while before I get to them and things happen. So if you want to be in the now, be sure to use that as a resource so that you know. You can also follow me on Instagram, Hooked on Air, which is my day-to-day. -day. I literally bring you in on what I'm doing day-to-day, hour-to-hour, as far as discovery and approach and learning these guns. There's loads of pictures and tech notes there that don't always make it into the videos on these two YouTube channels. Of course, you can hit me up on Facebook as well if you do a search there for AEAC, Air Gun Exploration, uh, Hooked on Air. That'll all bring you to my Facebook page, which I'll share industry press releases, industry announcements, sometimes final thoughts and con conclusions, sometimes uh, a trailer teaser videos when I'm kind of between AEAC vlog and the full production or full review over on AEAC home and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, I don't want you guys to, I don't want this to be mistaken. I love being there for you and helping you guys, but it's getting overwhelming trying to keep up with questions that I've already done the due diligence and put in the time to get answered for you. So before you post that question, um, in any of those venues or the Air Gun Nation forum, I hang out there as well under AEAC. I do take private messages. Public is better though, so that everybody can, you know, partake and enjoy in your question and answer. But before you hit me up, um, please do your part and make sure that I haven't answered it already. I mean, guys, my world's crazy. Like I'll put up a review and someone will be like, how much does it cost? Uh, what was the accuracy at hundred yards? What's the shot count? What pellets did it like? And these are obviously things that I'm answering in the review. So, uh, we're kind of in this together and that I want to keep up and get all your questions answered. Right. But you know, if, if, if that's something that you want of me, just do me a favor and do your due diligence, due, due diligence before you hit me with another question because it's kind of getting to be a lot and it's important to me to be able to uh, be there for you in that capacity. All right, the Beeman R9. This came to me, guys, by way of Pyramid Air. Uh, the importer is Air Venturi. Let me get you through what it is. I'll share with you what I've learned about it and then um, we'll get into uh, some fun stuff. So this is a German-made brake barrel. It is made by Weirau Sport in Germany. It's imported by Air Venturi and sold through Pyramid Air under the Air Venturi brand name and it is the, called that Beeman R9 and it is the sister air gun to the Weirau HW95. Now mechanically they're supposed to be identical. I've confirmed this with both the manufacturer and the distributor. Um, I was fortunate enough to do a full review on the HW95 over on that other YouTube channel I was telling you about, the Argon Exploration and Advancement channel. Um, in this same caliber, if I recall, I tested it at 25 yards, 50 yards, did a bunch of other stuff. And while a lot was, a si while a lot was similar, I found some things to be different too. So you want to check out that video and those differences are likely... Um, boiled down to manufacturing tolerances in the pellets that I was using, maybe the barrels on the guns and some other things. But they're the same thing, um, other than a couple of very minor differences, I suspect. And uh, we'll get into that later. But the gun's just 42 and a half inches long. Uh, it's available here in the States in 177, 20 cal or 22. You're in the 380 to $400 price point here. 
Um, weight, it weighs seven and a half pounds by itself, 9.1 pounds scoped. It comes with an ambidextrous Monte Carlo stock. It is beechwood, hardwood beechwood that is stained walnut. It's got really nice checkering up here on the uh, on the forearm and the uh, in the grip. It's blued very nicely. I will say this R9 has a couple of factory love marks on it that I didn't see on the Viral 95 in the bluing. Um, that one was absolutely flawless. This one I would say is 99% amazing compared to like, you know, the rest of the break barrel market. You're going to pay a little bit more for this product, but, uh, but you're going to get more, uh, more too. It does take advantage of a globe or uh, hooded sight up here at the front, an adjustable sight uh, for windage and elevation here midship. And something cool about um, this globe sight is it's nice that it's housed so you're not going to bang it or break it and inside if i just unscrew this little guy here on the back of the hood uh, beeman includes uh, six of these different little sight apertures and i can tell you guys i remember back when i was 14 15 16 years old and first picked up a brake barrel and back then i think it was an rws product and it had a hooded sight like this, if I recall, and, and uh, some different apertures for it. And I got to tell you, it was a lot of fun. And I was really surprised at how well I could do at 25 and even sometimes 50 yards when I got lucky with my good eyes and all of those sights. But uh, this comes with six of them, like I said. So that was kind of a uh, nice treat. Dovetail 11 millimeter up on top. It's got a couple, um, if I remember three three or four different uh, holes in the top of the receiver where you can drop down a uh, pin from your scope mount so that you don't get any shifting around speaking of mounts I had a little bit of fun with this one these are sports match 30 millimeter adjustable scope mounts you can get these at pyramid 2 I think they're I think they're 60 bucks they have like two or three different kinds between 60 and 150 um, that are all adjustable, but these ones I think were about 60. They were just adjustable for elevation. And what I used these for was to get this scope on uh, on center at 25 yards without having to fiddle with the adjustments. So I wound up raising the back up just a little bit. And on that note, little, I would call that almost zero barrel droop. You know, the scope is what we're going to say, maybe two inches maybe an inch and a half above the barrel and at 25 yards on an ocular, ocularly centered scope um, with the, the adjustments on the scope mounts perfectly flat or a parallel to the barrel. I was getting a point of impact change of two inches low, two and a quarter inches low, which isn't much different than you'd get, you know, on a well-machined uh, PCP for that distance and uh, in these heights. So barrel droop, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call non-existent here on this one and that's very impressive. My heart's out to uh, to Beeman on that because that can be a little bit of a pain in the hiney in some of the other brands. I've seen some of them that are six inches low at 25 yards and worse in brake barrels. So just uh, a mentionable and notable that I wanted to pass on to you. Um, you know, it's nice to see kind of where your dollars go. Got a nice little rubber butt pad on the back here, nothing fancy. The um, the trigger, so the trigger in these guns, the R9 and the HW95 is the record, R-E-K-O-R-D trigger. It's kind of the trigger that all other brake barrel air gun triggers are measured by. Uh, generally speaking, Air Arms has a phenomenal one. Hatsan has a very good one. Um, the rest of them are kind of, in my experience, I mean, they're just, they're shitty. I'm just gonna call, call a spade a spade. But um, this one came breaking at about two pounds, 10 ounces. That HW95, I think, was about two and a half pounds from memory. I've adjusted both down to a pound and a half-ish, which was absolutely paramount to me seeing the accuracy out of the gun at 25 yards. So what I mean by that is if I left that at the two pounds, 10 ounces that it came with, which may be a perfectly fine hunting trigger for some larger critters in order to get like, like, you know, 0 0.40 ish groups at 25 yards. I needed to get that break weight down to a pound and a half to, uh, 
to uh, to work work for me. And and I do want to caution you this um, this adjustment here on the back. You turn it counter clock counter clockwise to reduce break weight. I wound up going about a turn and a half out or counterclockwise before I started seeing that into the pound and three quarters ish territory. If you go, go too far, you can render the gun unsafe. So I do want to caution you for that. I actually got it down to about a pound. And then when I went to flip the safety, the gun went off loaded and thank goodness it was pointed uh, up in the air. But if you're going to be experiment with that, just use uh, caution and a pound and a half I found to be kind of good ish. The other thing is this, um, you know, when I tested this record trigger in that 95, this adjustment screw stayed put. It was really kind of stiff in its adjustment. Like I had good resistance between the threads of the screw and the threads of, you know, the trigger housing. So when I'd make it an adjustment, it would stay put. This one tends to kind of wander around on me pretty good, um, but it settled into a place of about a pound and five ounces or something like that where it seems to be staying put, but it just doesn't have the resistance the other one had. So, you know, if I owned this gun, I'm probably gonna get that where I want, get some blue lock tight on there, leave it for 24 hours and, and go from there so it, uh, it doesn't wander. Uh, the gun does use a coil spring power plant to propel that piston, that it's gonna be your source of compressed air to move that move that pellet on down uh, on down the road. Um, I will say that to cock this rifle, and I'm gonna do it here for you so that you guys can hear it. To cock this rifle, I will say that no gas ram has anything, no OEM gas ram rifle that I've experienced has anything on the slickness, the smoothness, and the refinement of the cocking stroke of um of this brake barrel and here it is i want you guys to listen and i'll try to shut up and hopefully you won't hear anything at all okay there's no crunching there's no grinding literally all i heard was the really clean seal of that piston or, or that piston seal coming down the bore of the uh of the air tube there it was almost like you can you could just hear what a super good precise fit that is it's almost like these things they put them together with such tolerances that it's almost like they're tuned out of the factory. That being said, the firing cycle, you will absolutely know that there's a coil spring power plant in here. The twang and the buzz is very, very pronounced and very much there. Um, that never bothered me as an air gunner. Like I, I kind of look at these brake barrels as, um, you know, that's all part of the experience and the nostalgia you know, for me, if you will, but I read your comments and that really bugs a lot of you guys and you try to tune a lot of that out there. But I've, I haven't seen any effect on accuracy with the twang and the buzz in a shot cycle. For example, referring back to that HW95 full review, I think I was three quarter inch groups at 50 yards and 4.40 inch groups at 25 yards. And that thing was rocking and rolling like a slinky. So, you know, I just, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, but just, you know, there's the information for what it's worth. It can be decocked. The safety is an automatic uh, resetting safety, which means each time I cock this gun, uh, it's going to reset, it's going to reset itself into the safe on position. You simply flip it off right here. It's in a really good spot up there by the thumb. And then the gun can be safely decocked. Make sure you have good pressure here because this is a pretty powerful gun and slowly release it back up to its original, um, position that wedge lock you probably heard it slam into shape there damn nice really just a good solid like you don't get the feeling like you know that 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 things aren't shored up the way they should and that can be a pain point um with uh, less than stellar accuracy with some other brands so you're kind of getting that quality again and you're paying for it 400 dollars price point but uh but it's definitely there Stock screws, these came, they were pretty snug. I was able to get maybe an eighth turn out of each of them. And I noticed that through the 100 rounds I put in the gun, the day through the gun the day before yesterday, um, they backed out maybe that eighth turn and kind of just stayed right where they were. And I didn't see any, uh, any diminishing accuracy. Even there, those shots right at the very end when I got through 100, um, 
you know, I was one whole groups at 25 yards and we'll get into that in a minute. So that was not a worry as I've seen other brands and other guns just kind of come apart there. Uh, power, I mentioned it's powerful. The R9 is basically a 17 foot pound Springer in my experience, what I've learned of it so far in 22 Cal. It got there by pushing, let me ward it this way. The sweet spot for this gun is kind of 12 to 18 grains, uh, 634 to 808 feet per second. That's kind of where I got the good harmony, the good shot cycle, um, a good balance between flip, power, and accuracy. And um, it just see, and, and that and you can hear it. You can hear when the gun is in a happy spot, when it has a, pe uh, a pellet or a slug or whatever that seals up the barrel well. It likes the weight. And, you know, that harmony will, uh, will be there. But um, it's pushing that 18 grain to 634, and it's pushing a 12 grain to uh, 808 average. You'll see some higher spikes in there, but those are average. Extreme spreads for me with a good ceiling lead pellet. We're in the 10 foot per second range with alloy up to 25 feet per second. Uh, accuracy was still good at 25 yards. It really didn't seem to... Uh, it really didn't seem to, to matter. But the owner's manual does say that uh, you're gonna need a, hundred, a thousand shots to experience full break-in on the rifle. And what that means to you is you're gonna get your highest velocity, you're gonna get your, your tightest extreme spreads and standard deviation, and you're gonna get your smoothest cocking and firing cycle and maybe even trigger and those th things. But this trigger, guys, is a total rock star. Dual stage and um, you know, again, lots of flexibility. What's a trigger guard made out of? Metal trigger guard. That's always good to see. All right, uh, scope. So, so, you know, Springer's are notorious for destroying scopes. This is the new Air Max SF30 Compact. Not a cheap scope, about 380 bucks. It's a 3212 by 40 AO. Um, very nice scope. Obviously, it's very small. It's very light. Um, and after 100 yards, I didn't kill it. <laughs> it hasn't, or excuse me, 100 shots. It hasn't died yet. I'll get a couple hundred more through here and be able to give you another report. But I got the green light from Hawk that it should be okay. And I got the green light to review it on this gun. So um, we'll see how, uh, how, how it goes. But so far, so good. It's a fantastic scope. Good glass, nice and light. Um, that smaller tube, it's not, or, or not nice, nice and lightweight. That smaller tube, it's not in, as big and bright as a 40 or, or, or as a 50 millimeter bell and maybe a larger scope, but it did just fine. It had a real nice reticle. Um, the scope did what I told it to. I did, the, like I said, I did the, uh, the vertical with the sports match mounts, but my horizontal was off by about four inches on an ocularly centered scope. I don't know if that's the machining on the receiver or the mounts, but at 25 yards, I was four inches left with everything properly centered. And it brought it into spec no fine, and it held it fine for the, the several hours that I played with it, putting those 100, uh, 100 shots through. Now, you know, this was kind of a curiosity with these mounts. I think these are normally meant for pre-charged pneumatics, but I wanted to push the limits and see how they'll hold up to a Springer. And... Zero movement, rock solid. Well, I tortured the hell out of it a couple days ago. But Sportsmatch also has this uh, A0 P-like Papa 5.6. It's also an adjustable one-piece scope mount, and I think this is more what they had in mind for you guys, for, uh, for Springers. I don't know if these are available at Pyramid Air. I'm guessing they are. And it, too, has the new Easy Fit Recoil Pin. So um, that ought to stay in place for you just fine and mound up here uh, really nice so if you don't have these or, or want this or have a springer that's more powerful than 17 foot pounds that are out there this might be the one to get not that these won't hold up I just don't know and I feel like I'm pushing the design limits of uh, of those mounts a little bit um, accuracy and pellets so I ran the normal gamut of pellets, you know, my normal, as many as I could that I thought would do well at 25 through the gun, um, definitely did the homework and it definitely had some favorites and, and those favorites were kind of similar and kind of different than that HW95. 
the 95 really like the field target trophy um, alloys. I think that was my best pellet at 50 yards for that gun in that full review. But this one, man, I couldn't get it to like any of the field target trophies, the lead, the different size head lead, and and, um, and uh, um, it did not like those alloys at all. But it definitely liked all these. It did really well with the JSB RS, which is a 13 and a half grain. Fitment was really good. Nice, tight, extreme spreads. It loved the JSB Hades, which really gets me excited because that's going to make for a great little hunting gun because these things are just nasty. They really are. Um, I've watched some videos of these on YouTube, and, and that is a wicked little pellet. 15.89 grain did just fine in here. The Terminators were probably the best 1636. I only shot them like five or ten times. I think it was just five. Yeah, I shot the one five-shot group with it, and that was it. And they basically cloverleafed on me at 25. If I shot five more, I don't know if it'd do the same, but there's a lot of promise uh, there, and that was the tightest group of five but probably need some more testing to verify. And it also really liked these Barracuda Hunters, another uh, another heavy heavyweight, 18.21 grains. It was lobbing them, you know, uh, 630 feet per second-ish, something like that, but they did great, and they carried that energy out to 25. And, it, and if you need a lead-free alloy, it did well with these 11.75 uh, grain GTOs. Um, the HW95 loved these things at 25 and 50. You know, I only shot one or two five-shot groups with this, and, you know, I am definitely a variable in this, and I may not have shot my best group, but they were showing a lot of promise at, uh, at 25, so I'll get them out uh, at 25 and 50 for the full review for sure. One takeaway with these is I noticed the extreme spread was much higher. 25-ish versus 10-ish. So they're not sealing up in the barrel as well, but that may be a non-issue because a 25 foot uh, per second extreme spread at 50 yards out of a Springer is no different than a 10 foot per second extreme spread for point of impact and accuracy. So don't let that, you know, derail you, uh, derail you too much. Um, I think... Before we get into, so, so normally after I, one of you guys actually asked a question um, somewhere, I don't know where I saw it, Instagram, Facebook, or one of the two YouTube channels, but you had asked if I clean the barrel um, between each brand of pellet or each style of pellet when I'm doing my culling to get that big group down to a little group to get ready to film out at the longer distances for the full review. Um, and I don't. I never have. I've read probably what you guys have read where there are people that are really seem really sensitive to that. Where, um, you know, they feel that they need to clean between different styles of pellet to get the most accuracy out of them. For what it's worth, guys, I get my hands on a lot of iron into a ton of shooting across a ton of different pellets. And I have never, ever, ever noticed that. And that even goes for 50 and 100 yard shooting on, uh, on AEC Home. I've never even noticed the slightest inclination of that. <clears throat> for me, if the barrel is in a happily leaded place, meaning it's not over leaded or un under leaded and it's not fouled, it really doesn't matter. Um, I've just never experienced that, so I wanna pass that on. I don't know if that's myth busting or if maybe someone else's reality is a little bit different. Um, than what I've experienced, but there it is for what it's worth. Also, wanted to mention this. So, um, you know, why not? Slugs are starting to come across my desk to put through these pre-charged pneumatics. I've been very curious how they would do in a brake barrel. This is the first brake barrel I've put them through. I put I put all the ones I had through, the JSB knockouts, the H&Ns, the lighter weight NSAs, and these FX hybrids. This did about uh, an inch group at 25 with the 17 and a half grain NSAs. I did two groups of five to kind of verify that. But it absolutely loved these FX hybrids at 25 yards. I mean, we're talking 25 yards of 12 foot pound tear at like 450 feet per second with these bad boys. And I think that I could have gotten all five through the exact same hole at 25. And I'm pretty sure that that one that strayed by just a little bit was on me. Um, but 
for whatever reason, this German barrel is having a love affair with these. I don't know if it has a practical application anywhere or for anybody, but I wanted to be able to do the work and pass it on to you. At least we've got a start. So there it is. It loves FX hybrid slugs. So, so there's that. Um, before we get on to, uh, you know, normally, so after I run all that garbage through, I clean the barrel. That's when I reset. I reset in the very beginning. I usually season it for 5, 10, 15 shots. That's what most clean barrels like across all the different manufacturers before you'll start getting the best accuracy out of them. Sometimes you'll get a finicky barrel or one that isn't perfect, and you could need up to 100 shots to let that one in. That's because something is a little bit funky in there or a piece of lead stuck and it took 100 shots to like get it out and get it smooth. That happens, but the reset points for me is when I first get a gun, I clean it. After I do the big call here at the house for the vlog here, I clean it and then I go out and do my, my, um, my longer uh, full review testing of that smaller, smaller batch. But that's something I normally do by myself for fun today. I think I'm going to bring you guys in on it and why I like this patchworm so well, um, so well. Is that good English so much? I mean, this is like the best $8 I think an air gunner could spend. And we'll get into that. But before, um, I wanna circle back to, you know, there's confusion, you know, there's Virau, there's Beeman, and then there's Beeman, right? And what do I mean by that? Well, Virau Sport is a German air gun manufacturer that manufacturers in Germany, all of the Virau's and Virau manufacturers in Germany, many of the Beemans, the, the more expensive well-to-do Beemans, not the Walmart Beemans. The Walmart Beemans, that's a different company. So you have Beeman China, which is, I think they're headquartered out in California. I have had some correspondence with them. That's what you see like in the big box stores. And then you have Beeman, which is manufactured by Virau in Germany. And there's some kind of like, um, you know, the, I, 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 I guess. And you know what? I, I think I'm actually going to place a phone call here. We're going to phone a friend. But I think that the way this works is Irvin Turi in Ohio, which is the wholesale or, or distribution portion of Pyramid Air. They have several of their own lines of air guns and several of their own branding. Um, I think they purchased the rights to the Beeman name. The Beeman name that was manufactured, that is manufactured in Germany, not the China Beeman, not the Walmart China Beeman. But um, I'm going to actually call Tyler Patner of the Pyramid Air Insider. He works over there at Pyramid Air. Those guys are all at home working for COVID, so hopefully I'll catch him. It seems like every time I want to call him, though, he's in a meeting. Those guys stay so busy. And maybe we can get a straight answer out of him. So, all right, let's see how this goes here. Pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. <laughs> hey! Are those work clothes? Work from home clothes. <laughs> Stand up a little taller. What's your t-shirt say? Uh, it's a field target match, actually. Southern Open. Southern. A years ago down in Georgia. I like it. Thanks for picking up, man. Yeah. Absolutely. What's going on? Hey, well, you guys know um, I'm here filming the vlog on the R9. You guys all know Tyler from Pyramid Air Insider and very successful FTT champion. Would that be accurate? Yep, I'm getting the thumbs uh, up. Uh, I, I've won a few matches here and there, sure. Yeah, the guy the guy knows his shit. I recommend following him, following him on Instagram and Facebook and listening to him over at PA2 on that Insider. He's got a lot of good things to contribute. But um, I'm sitting here film, yeah, filming the R9 vlog. And I want to make sure I'm not giving these guys misinformation. Um, the thing I'm not clear on is like, what I know is that there's, it has to do with, there's Virau over in Germany, yep. manufactures air guns. And then there's the Beeman name that I know that's affiliated with Air Venturi and Pyramid Air. Yep. And, and I think that those are made like the R9 here over in Germany. And then there's a Beeman name 
that I know, like the Chinese Beeman name that I see in Walmart that are based out in California that have emailed me a few times too. And I was just wondering if maybe you could bring clarity to all that for, for me and everybody else. Sure, yeah. Um, so, yes, there is a difference between um, – the, so the Chinese Beeman is uh, Beeman Marksman where the German-made stuff is Beeman Precision. So um, back in 2009 or so, Air Venturi was able to strike a deal with the company that uh, I believe took over for the original, you know, from Dr. Beeman when he sold the company. Um, the, that company kind of owned both for a while, and the plan, uh, my understanding at least, was to – uh, have that kind of precision stuff die off and Air Venturi jumped in and said like, hey, this is a, a great product line that needs to stick around. It has a lot of great history here in the U.S. Um, and we want to keep it going. So that's what they did and uh, they struck a deal basically uh, and have had kind of that beam and precision line ever since. Okay, so if I'm reading you right, Air Venturi under the Pyramid Air umbrella purchased the brand name Beeman, the one that's affiliated with the German-made guns by Vira. Correct, yeah. So I, I, I don't know if purchase is the right term, but um, usually these things are done as licensing deals. So basically you, you own the rights to use the name, you okay. know, Beeman Precision. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but, but of course with that came, you know, uh, the – getting involved with with Vira to um, you know maintain those guns and, and the same features that had been there from the beginning yeah you know on that note I noticed that um, you know I was telling the audience that I've spent time with the HW95 and the guns are mechanically identical although there was a little bit of difference in pellet preferences a little bit of difference in um, you know, and kind of how the record trigger responded. So that could be what we could chalk that up to. We could chalk that up to, um, you know, pellet manufacturing, barrel manufacturing trigger, whatever. But I guess, sure. yeah, I guess the ultimate question that they're probably wondering then is, do I purchase a Beeman R9 or do I purchase a Viro HW95 and would one have any advantage over the other? Can you offer any insight there? Yeah, sure. So, um, so as, as you mentioned, Steve, the, uh, there's mechanically really not a huge difference. Uh, there used to be some more physical differences in terms of appearance and stocks and things like that, but most of that has gone by the wayside now. Um, the big difference is that the Beeman products uh, are still covered under a lifetime warranty, uh, where where Vira products, you know, are I believe just a year. So um, that's a huge difference to the customer. Uh, you know, if you're looking to compare that 95 to an R9, uh, you know, that in my mind is the big reason why I'd want to buy an R9. And of course, that, that warranty isn't, um, you know, we're talking about, you know, covering against manufacturer defects, like things like springs and seals, they do wear out. Although, of course, even the individual parts have some sort of specific time frame uh, that they're, they're warranty for before that kind of normal use period would be considered uh, to have passed. So that lifetime warranty, like I said, pretty uh, that's the big one. That's a significant one. And, and, and if I'm understanding the way the licensing works, that lifetime warranty um, is something that's backed by Pyramid and Air Venturi. So that's legit. Yeah, exactly. That's something uh, that, that, you know, Air Venturi is servicing in-house. Um, you know, we get parts from, from Viro. A handful of the parts are, are even sourced elsewhere for things that we can't get anymore for some of the older guns. So, uh, you know, we've uh, we've done as good of a job as we can to try and maintain, like, accurate parts listings, uh, you know, as well as keeping some of those older models, you know, servicing those and, and all that stuff, too. So it's... Uh, quite honestly, it's, it's been a really good thing, and I think a lot of people take advantage of it. I mean, we see tons of old, um, you know, R1s, R9s, uh, R7s, even some of the old uh, fine work bow stuff that Beeman was importing back in the day as well. Yeah, that's awesome, buddy. Yeah, I'm actually reading in the owner's manual here. It is a genuine lifetime warranty to the original owner and purchaser. You've got to have proof of purchase, of course, and it's exactly like you said. Um, it's a, it covers labor and parts for factory defects, but of course, springs and seals are like brakes and tires on a car. They wear out. So, but those things are inex inexpensive anyway, and you can kind of do that at home. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're talking about springs are 
15, 20 bucks, and usually seals aren't aren't much different either. So, yeah, I mean, I, most of it's on on the Pyramid Air website. You know, if a customer has a spring compressor and wants to do the work themselves, uh, you know, if you're out of that time frame. Um, but of course, you know, it, the guys over at Air Venturi uh, and the service department is able to repair anything. So it's all right there for you guys. Good deal. Well, thanks for straightening that straightening that out for us, buddy. I know you're a busy dude, so thanks for picking up. Absolutely, man. Happy to help. Appreciate it. We're going to clean this gun now, and I'm going to say goodbye. All right. Enjoy. <laughs> See you, man. Later. Thanks again. All right, so there you have it, guys. Um, interesting. You know, it's always nice to get a little peek behind the curtain and, and understand, you know, what everything really means. Cut through the rumor and really get down to brass tacks. All right. Let's um, actually... Before we clean this, I do want to share something really quick. So, before I stepped out of frame, sorry, I'm going to grab something over here in a second. I just got ahead of myself. So, um, the Air Gun Nation Forum, Michael and I, and a couple of the manufacturers, I think tomorrow or the next day, are going to release a, it's a little infomercial, sorry, um, a dedicated COVID-19 SIMWA event and giveaway. If you're not familiar with SIMWA, that stands for Service men and women appreciation event which is where normally michael and i take our own dollars and we go in and we buy guns and scopes and if you're on the front lines please fire ems you know a whole list of things we'll get into that tomorrow or the next day um, these events and giveaways are held exclusively for you guys and uh, you'll see that kicked off not on this channel but over on the air gun exploration and advancement channel aec home as well as the Air Gun Nation Forum sometime before the end of this week. And check this out. So our heart really goes out to you guys for all, the, all that you do for us. And um, this event and giveaway is going to be exclusively for you guys. And this one's a little bit different because obviously you're looking at an Air Arms S510 XS TDR here that I've done a full review of. Oh, it's probably been a little while now, but over on the other channel, this is the actual gun that I pulled out of the closet here. Hasn't been fired since. Um, so it's a hell of a shooter at 50 and 100 yards. And I want to make clear, normally Michael and I would buy these things for these events, but this one was made, um, this one was donated by Air Arms to that event winner. Sports Match Rings UK is donating the mounts you see here and Hawk Optics is donating this scope. And you'll get some ammunition from H&N Sport and JSB as well. The bipod belongs to me, as does this adapter, so you'll have to get your own. But uh, more information uh, on that later in the week, guys. I just want you to know how important you are to us. If you've been on the front lines, if you've seen some of these other SIMWA videos before, and you're familiar with who they're open to, this COVID thing is going to be, this COVID SIMWA is going to be a more relaxed, broader interpretation of that. And details will be forthcoming. In other words, we're opening it up, opening it up to a larger range of uh, a group, a demographic, if you will, just to say thank you and thank you for all you've done for, uh, for our country and, and the world in some cases. All right, so that's enough about that. Let's set up to do... Hey, a quick barrel clean, and then we'll uh, we'll call it a day. And uh, hopefully, in the next few days here, I'll get out and uh, do some some uh, some greater testing and reviewing here with the uh, the R9, and and we'll let her rip on the big channel. All right. Okay. So I've done videos on these patchworms before, guys. Uh, they recently have started sponsoring AEAC, but years, years before that, I was very passionate about this product. I've used them all, just like you guys have. I'm the crazy guy that's even dug the, the brass bristle, bristles out of the middle of a boar snake to find out that it still worked like crap compared to something like this. And I was so passionate about this brand for so many years, and it's so inexpensive and does such a good job that they decided to start sponsoring me as like kind of a thank you. And, and I'm grateful and I'm going to continue to pass pass, uh, pass that word along and uh, spread their gospel because this is like the best $8 you'll ever spend as an air gunner. And I'm going to show you why here. 
in a second. But what makes them so good is, yeah, we've all used these weed eater strings, you know, and then pull the patch through. But what's so cool about these patchworms is it's a weed eater string with a sharpened point on the end, and it's got a stay right here. And then they come with these caliber specific collars. This is a 22 cal specific collar for a 22 caliber air gun. They have them 177, 225, 30, 357. I mean, they got all this, I think they even got bigger than that. And um, what's so important about this collar is it takes that either that felt button for the patch and it really just presses it. Like if this is your barrel, it presses that patch out against the walls of the barrel and it really scrubs. And what you'll find is you'll find your guns coming cleaner, faster, and more thoroughly over any other cleaning me method. And you don't even need to use a harsh cleaner. I just use Ballastol, which is safe for everything. Wood, plastic, the O-rings, barrels. I mean, I don't think you could eat the stuff, but it's just, uh, it's eco-friendly, skin safe, no carcinogens, and it just works fantastic. So what we're gonna do here, is we're gonna cock the gun, make sure that the safety is working, and it is working. All right, I'm gonna show you guys how this works. We have kind of limited room here, so we're gonna to have to do the best we can. But um, what I like to do is get out just a couple of patches. There's maybe that's probably even too many. There's probably four or five or six in this stack. <clears throat> Hose them up pretty good here. I'm gonna keep my face away from that because you can never, never can be too careful with a brake barrel. Keep your fingers out of this area too if you can. Sometimes it's not a bad idea to get like a kid's belt or something and belt this to this, you know, so that you have that added measure of safety. And I'm working that ballast all into these patches. All right, so the first thing I'll do is I wanna get the barrel lubed up before I pull one of these little felt buttons through. And I'm going to pierce the patch right in the center. These patches are one and three quarter inch diameter. I'll usually start on a 2.2 with a one and a half inch patch because you can't always get the bigger one and three quarter inch patch through. And you see that collar sits right up against that patch and it's gonna press into the outer walls of this, uh, of this barrel and it's gonna scrub it really good. So there's the first pull. Let's have a look. So this is, this is the first pull after all of that garbage that I put through it, you know, to do the call and there's not a single lead shaving on here. I'm just getting like graphite which is what a lot of these graphite and oils, which are what a lot of these pellets are bathed in. And that's, this is a testament to uh, the quality and the finishing of these Beeman Byrow barrels from Germany. This ain't the Kmart stuff. All right, so all I did was I flipped the patch over and we're gonna pull it through, pull it through again. And that one pulled through easier because now the barrel's lubed all right, no metal shavings on that one at all. So now that I got a coat of oil down in the barrel or ballast oil or whatever this stuff is, it smells like black licorice. I'm gonna get a little felt button here. You can use one button, you can use two, you can use as many as you want. If I got a barrel that's really bad, I might stack two together. All right, first we're gonna put on it. A clean patch. And then I'm going to slip on. All right, so then I'm going to slip on a button. So you have button, patch, and collar. So the button is going to get out there and really kind of, it's going to get into the grooves of the rifling better, into the recesses. And then the patch is going to come by behind it with that collar and really scrub the walls. And watch how fast these things come clean. So that was one patch, two pulls so far. And this is a hundred rounds of, of pellet jambalaya. Ugh. Scrubbed a little bit harder because you've got more resistance there. All right, and look how clean that's already coming. 
Look at that. Still no metal flake. All right, I'm going to flip it around. And I'll normally leave this button on, you know, clean side of the patch, but I'll use the button again because the patch is coming behind the button and cleaning up behind it. And the button is just kind of there to get in, get in those grooves of the rifling. All right, give it a little start there. Pull. All right, look how clean that patch is coming already. All right, so that's four. One, two, three, four. And the reason this was such a big deal to me, guys, is I would spend absurd amounts of time cleaning, cleaning these barrels via other methods that just, I don't know, they just, they just didn't have that scrubbing ability to get the junk out. So it just took longer. These are going to start coming out super clean now. There's that one. Look at that. Look how clean that is already. So that's technically the fifth pull. We'll flip it around. This will be the sixth. And I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Where you'll sit there, you'll have like 25 patches lined up all across your workbench, and you'll be like, WTF, will this thing ever stop giving up the ghost when it comes to muck? All right, and just like that, guys, look at that. And there could not be any more <clears throat> loaded pizza, jambalaya, pellet, gunk, gombo, combo in here. And it's all, I think, because of that collar. I'm not even going to use this last patch here. This one's a dry one. So what I normally like to do then is I'll I normally have my little microfiber rag, but I'll just use this. I'll just use this uh, garbage towel here. I, I dry the oil off of the, uh, the patchworm. Then I'll start pull a couple dry patches through, and you are done. You want to get that oil out of there because it will muck with your accuracy. You can shoot it out. It may take you 20, 30, 40 pellets to shoot it all out, or you can just uh, put run a couple dry patches through. Something I'm going to show you here in a second too. If I can, if I can time this just right, I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here. Yep, perfect. So look. <laughs> yeah, it's like fishing. Look, let me get this where it's going to be focused for you. There you go. Look at the fitment of that cleaning patch scrubbed on that barrel choke. I mean, that thing is like tighter than a, a you know what, a cat's ass. And I think that's why these things tend to do so well. Let me turn it sideways so you guys can kind of see how well that collar presses that weed eater string up against the walls of that barrel. So it's kind of like I said, for, for eight bucks, man, you know, this is, I'm not getting paid by Patchworm to uh, share this information. That was the video I did for him a couple of videos back. This one is just cause and this product works so damn well. Try it and call me a liar <laughs> there it is guys so what we want to do now is just make sure you don't have any oil residue up in this area okay we're going to safely decock the gun and we are good to go so i think that that's been um that's been enough for a vlog what do you guys think yeah i think that's good so I'll, um, I'll get this gun out to 50 yards and I'll get you the full review over on the big channel, AEAC Home, probably in the next week or so, weather depending, but I think weather's looking pretty good here in Central Florida. And uh, I'll see you guys again then.